My name is Linda Hollenbeck, and I live in Robbinsdale, Minnesota, and uh, I come here today just basically to let you know that uh, I represent a lot of people, not just myself, and uh, vulnerable adults that this cutback in our renters rebate will really hurt us. My rent goes up, it doesn't go down, and the economy, everything out there is going up, food, and medical, our insurance, Medicare insurance premiums, everything is going up. And uh, it was, it's just nice to know that once a year we don't have to scrape bottom and uh, uh, try to wonder where we're going to pay our m prescription bills or eat. I just wanted to follow up um, with Linda's testimony um, to let you know that um, we have uh, a mailing list of about 8,000 renters across the state, most of whom are uh, low and very low income, uh, primarily people with disabilities and seniors. And over the past year, we've been um, receiving letters and testimonies from uh, individuals like Linda letting us know what they use their renter's credit for. The number one item that people used uh, the renter's rebate for is to pay bills. Number two is groceries. Um, number three, uh, to buy clothing. Um, insurance, um, eye care. Um, I care is one of those things that a lot of people's health insurance does not cover. A lot of seniors need prescription drugs that they've written in about. Um, car repairs are another one. Molly from Grand Rapids uh, wrote in letting us know that she needs car repairs. Um, doctor's appointments, <coughs> winter gear like coats, shoes and boots, and then some other top items include school supplies, um, bus fare, and um, laundry. Do you consider this allowing people to keep more of their own money or is it somebody else's money that they're keeping? Representative Rukavina, first of all, okay, it is, any two-bit clown can get up and criticize the choices we have to make this year. Anyone can do it. It requires no experience, no talent, nothing. Every single option is unpopular and bad representative. Every one. Okay? The matter in this, the, the, regarding this policy, the property tax is supposed to be uh, a percentage of the property taxes paid on apartments is uh, refunded back. The percentage of the rent that they're paying that's going to property taxes is what's supposed to be refunded to them. There's been study after study that shows that that number in statute is overreporting the real amount they're paying in taxes. Again, Representative Rukavina, if you want to um, uh, use my honesty against me, that's, that's fine. I'm making myself very available for this. Every option is bad. And I just hope that by April Fool's Day, we actually have choices for us to discuss here instead of just beating around, the, beating around like a pinata these options that are out there. Yeah, they're bad. I get it. Let's move on. Here we are in a mess because of a, a situation where we thought we had an honest approach to the budget crisis last year in using $2 billion of one-time money and making $2 billion in cuts that a lot of us at this table didn't particularly like to make and looking for, you know, for $2 billion in new revenue. <laughs> I mean, they're difficult cuts, you're right. Raise your voice, get a little angry, you should. The cuts we're going to make are terrible. But if I recall correctly, the little tweak on the riches of the rich in this state and what they would have paid in income tax was about identical to what some of these people carrying that grocery bag with teeth and eyeglasses and shirts in it was equal their cut. So. It's a question of who, who gets to keep more money in their pocket. That's what the question is here. Who gets to keep more money in their pocket? I know you feel philosophically that the wealthiest uh, are already paying more than their fair share. I, I appreciate your honesty. I don't feel that way, but you and I, you know, I'm the world's worst capitalist. I say it again, I know that, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> But I got a big heart. Remember, Jesus was a socialist, and you like him. 